In today's video, we're going to be continuing our coverage of Bloomboro spoilers, looking today at everything for green and red that has been revealed so far. As I said yesterday, I'm working through the colors and trying to get caught up, and then we'll just continue the spoilers as normal. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. everybody thank you so much for being here welcome back and as i said in the intro we are going to go ahead and cover everything red and green that's been revealed so far at the time i'm recording this um just trying to play a little bit of catch up here i made a video yesterday talking about all the white stuff that had been released so far so if you haven't had a chance to see that yet go ahead and check it out also made a video covering uh, bloomboro from a collecting perspective as well that you can check out um those will all be part of the bloomboro playlist that this video will also be on so you can check it out there if you guys are new to the channel please go ahead and hit that subscribe button be sure to like the video and click the bell icon to be notified when new videos are posted try to post coverage as quickly and efficiently as i can while also making sure i get a chance to go through and kind of review the cards so any support is appreciated but yes you know the deal so i'm not going to waste any more of your time we're going to hop right into it and we've got the first card here artist's talent nice to see classes making a return after adventures in the forgotten realms which is like two years old at this point this is one in a red and it says gain the next level as a sorcery to add its ability so one of the level up sagas where you basically pay the mana cost to allow the next ability to sort of become a part of the saga whenever you cast a non-creature spell you may discard a card if you do draw a card non-creature spells you cast cost one less to cast and if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or permanent that opponent controls it deals that much damage plus two instead so honestly across the board this card is just really really strong in every facet the first effect is solid for cards like dragon's approach i saw some people make that reference being able to um you know discard get extra draw power kind of keep cycling through your deck is definitely a strong option and i think in standard specifically mono red is really going to like having access to this the second effect reducing the cost of non-creatures it's never going to be bad turning something that might cost one in a red into just one red is definitely a a powerful thing especially when red is not like ramping mana so if you have the ability to play more spells it feeds into things like storm decks and other things and then that last effect you know buffing the amount of damage that non-combat sources will deal turning your play with fire into a four damage instead of a two etc um just across the board a really well designed card cool to see classes back and i look forward to seeing what other stuff we're going to get in the set Nothing really bad to say about this. I just think it's a strong card overall. Might of the Meek is one red instant. Target creature gains trample until end of turn. It gains plus one plus zero until end of turn if you control a mouse, then draw a card. Definitely a card that's geared more towards drafting or maybe like a mouse typal type deck. Um, it is certainly not anything, you know, game changing or groundbreaking, but it's not a bad card by any stretch of the imagination. It just sort of exists. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but I did want to cover it because it was here. We've got Bramble Guard Captain. This is three and a red creature, Mouse Soldier. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is Bramble Guard Captain's power. Another strong card for mice. Uh, definitely seems like they're trying to, you know, play into the theme of having a bunch of small mice and buffing them all up because a lot of the cards that we've gotten so far for those, uh, but typically white and red for mice, uh, do seem to do that. So hopefully, um, you know, any of the commander options for mice will kind of follow suit in a similar way. Um, but it's a good card, uh, and just kind of wanted to mention it in passing. Now, Manifold Mouse is one I like quite a lot. This is one in a red creature, Mouse Soldier, with Offspring 2. We talked about Offspring yesterday. If you missed it, uh, you pay 2 when you cast it. You create a 1-1 token copy of it. So, nice, you know, option to have some extra stuff on the field. At the beginning of combat in your turn, target mouse you control gains your choice of double strike or trample until end of turn. And obviously, if you make a copy of this, you can give something both of those effects. So, that's kind of one of the biggest um, things. But you can also give, you know, two mice, double strike. I mean, there's obviously different ways to play it. Um, I, I'm really happy to see that mice are getting a lot of low cost, you know, cards that can buff stuff up. You can kind of see a play style coming together for that, which is pretty cool. It looks like it's going to be fun. And I am, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what other mice stuff we end up getting as the reveals continue. But so far, so good. And finally for red, we have Season of the Bold. This is three and two red, part of the same cycle. Uh, you may choose up to five paw prints worth of modes. You may choose the same mode more than once. So if you use one, create a tap treasure token. Two, exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play them. Or three, until the end of your next turn, whenever you cast a spell, deal two damage to up to one target creature. So you can do three and two. You can do five of one. You create five treasure tokens. Um, there's a lot to work with here. Five mana is obviously a little costly. However, there is enough flexibility in this card, I think, that it's balanced and decent enough that it might see some play. It feels a little slow for standard, but I'm sure there's going to be some formats where it'll have at least a bit of utility. Um, it's not the strongest I've seen up to this point of the season cycle, but I do think it's going to be pretty good. And, uh, you know, it's certainly 
as rotation happens and new things come into standard, it's a card that's probably going to at least have some looks just because it could end up being um, better than it seems on paper. But let me know what you guys think of this card in the comments section down below. I always like to throw there for feedback because sometimes, you know, when I'm doing these initial reactions, I don't always have the best view or gauge of what we're working with. You know, it's kind of hard to think of everything all at once. And so, yeah, that's kind of where my, my brain ends up going. Now, moving on to the green we have so far, we've got Cash Grab. It's one and a green instant. Mill four cards. You may put a permanent card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you control a squirrel or return to squirrel this way, create a food token. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is like almost an identical copy of another card that exists, the name of which I cannot uh, think of off the top of my head. I wish Scryfall had a category for like similar effects or similar verbiage, and maybe there is a way to find that, and I'm just not familiar, but it's, it's cute. Uh, certainly decent, I guess, for squirrels. Um, with a lot of the stuff that's kind of reliant on food tokens now with things like Forage, it's definitely a bit better than I would have initially given it credit for, uh, but it's a common in the set for a reason, and while it's decent, I don't think it's anything worth spending a ton of time on. Hunter's Talent is the next class. This one is another enchantment, and it's one in a green. When it enters, target creature you control deals damage to its power equal to a creature you don't control. When you level it up, it says whenever you attack, target attacking creature gets plus one plus zero and trample until end of turn. And at level three, at the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature, your power four or greater, draw a card. I like this a lot. As someone who plays mono green and commander, um, I do think this card's really solid. There are plenty of cards that have that first effect but don't have anything else. So just that alone, I'm going to be playing this. I'm going to be able to pop something, and then I'll get additional use out of it in later turns. It's really not a bad card overall. It's not quite as good as the artist class, in my opinion, um, but it's it's still artist talent, sorry, but it's still a really, really solid card for green. Happy to see it, and I like that we're continuing to get some solid uncommons here, so no complaints on my end. Loom Rebello of the Woods, we talked about this card in a previous video, so I'm not going to get too deep into it, but just, you know, it it's a cool card that looks like it's going to have some fun potential as a commander. I don't know what other bears, if any, we're going to be getting in the set, because I do think this is one of the um, Calamity Beasts, so it may just be a one and done in terms of the bears. We'll have to see, uh, but overall, it's just a great card. Wanted to kind of mention it again in passing, because it's green if you guys missed the previous video from months back when that announcement was made. Sun Shower Druid is one green creature, Frog Druid. When it enters, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and you gain one life. Uh, nothing extraordinary, but not terrible either, especially in drafting and sealed. I think it's going to be fun. Um, it's pretty powerful in terms of what it can do for you if you're playing with a lower power level like you might be in sealed. So just a, a passing mention there. Uh, Tender Wild Guide, a hugely popular card so far, particularly because of its adorable little token, uh, but it's one in a green possum druid with offspring too. You can tap it to add one mana of any color or tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. So, you know, playing it with offspring, you're paying four mana to have the ability to get two mana each on future turns of any color. Um, I think green's certainly going to like this, but obviously it feels like a card that'll be strong in commander because of its flexibility, uh, and it's just adorable. So that's that's kind of a little bit of a bonus if you ask me. Wear down is one in a green with gift a card. You may promise your opponent a gift as you cast the spell. If they do, they draw a card before this effect resolves. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. If this gift was promised, instead draw destroy two target artifacts and or enchantments. I love this card. I think it's extremely strong for an uncommon. But letting your opponent draw a card, obviously giving your opponent extra advantage is not always something that you want to do. However, in this case, being able to remove two problematic things for the cost of two mana and just letting your opponent draw a card, it's very much like, a, I think, a Force of Vigor type card where you have the ability to remove multiple things. In that case, you're exiling a green from your hand. You're, you're just trading different types of losing advantage, but it's it's a really solid utility card for green, in my opinion, and will be one that I do slot into, um, into my commander decks, at least, that have access to green because it's a good form of removal. And finally, we have Thornvolt Forager. This is one in a green squirrel ranger. Tap for one green. Tap Forage. Add two mana in any combination of colors. If you missed it yesterday, Forage, you exile three cards from your grave or sacrifice a food. So you basically tap, sack a food, or exile three cards. You get uh, two mana in any way. And you can pay three in a green. Tap, search your library for a squirrel, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. So a tutor for squirrels. Obviously, that last effect is not going to be super... I don't think it's going to be super relevant in non-commander formats. The other effects definitely are. I think even in modern and maybe other formats too, getting three cards out of the graveyard for two mana uh, is definitely not going to be something that is overlooked. And this is not hard to bring out. It's it's pretty low to the ground. So, you know, you pay two to be able to get two on future turns. Uh, that's a pretty good trade-off. And the fact that you could add the mana in any combination of colors obviously gives you a lot more versatility. So overall, it's just a really good card. And I'm, I'm thrilled to see Squirrels getting more support. Chatterfang was one of my first commander decks and I absolutely adore the card and Squirrels as a whole. So I hope that theme continues here as we go along because there are definitely some cards that look like they will be fun.
fun. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. I tried to get through them as quickly and effectively as I could. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below of the red-green reveals so far. I'll probably do the blue and black in another video here, and then we'll be caught up, and then we'll just move forward like normal. But I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.